But how close are you? I think, I think uh, you know, we, we can't, you know, actually we cannot compare, uh, you know, the solar installation cost to this, uh, you know, uh, a conventional uh, path, a co-fired, you know, uh, uh, in, in generation. So it's not, uh, we, it's not apple to apple, or that, that's not the correct way to do the comparison. So what we do like a solar, because we don't involve in this long distance, you know, uh, transmission, and, and, and also so on. So actually it's very locally distributing, you know, uh, uh, power generation technology. So we usually compare generation of uh, uh, electricity, electricity generation cost in say maybe dollar or cents per kilowatt hour to the, you know, electricity price from the grid. That will be more fair comparison. So if you say, if you, you know, we compare this way in California, I can tell you if our panel price Solar panel price is around two dollar fifty, two dollar thirty per watt. I think the installation costs maybe four dollar per watt. It's already reaching grid parity in California. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is actually, you know, it's very dynamic uh, uh, scenario here. Like a conventional, you know, grid price keep going up. The solar is keep coming down. So there is a cross point. So that's why, like uh, recently in, in America, actually there are some innovations in solar sector. We, like a PPA, a power purchase agreement type of deal, you know, which has been heavily or start to involve with our solar installation. Mm -hmm. So, like people like Walmart, for example, they consume electricity, but they have huge roofs, so many stores for you know for solar people to install on their roof. So, what to do like now, you know, uh, the developer maybe say Goldman Sachs, they want to invest in solar plants. They just sign, you know, the power purchase agreement with mm -hmm. Walmart say 15 or 20 years cents per kilowatt hour for the next 20 years. This price is fixed. So Walmart can know in five years time maybe price already hit 30 right. or 40. Mm. So it's a good deal for them. Although maybe they, you know, a bit, little bit higher today, but they know five years, 10 years later will be much cheaper. Mm. So we have to look at this industry in a, in a very dynamic way. Yeah. Distributed generation system, and, and whether you see a crossover point where distributed generation will start to pre predominate over the central station model that, that Paul oversees now with his company. Well, I think it's, it seems now there's a change because, especially in the future, this decentralized this uh, distribution system probably will, will start to prevail. You know, like for example, if we talk all new, new uh, renewable energy, like a fuel cell, you know, fuel cell. Is, is decentralized. You know, you, every home can have a you know fuel cell generator, and all this co-generated technology is also decentralized. So I think, uh, uh, especially like a solar, is also you know, really you know, good at the peak. You know, peak generation right. is matched to the to the grid. I mean, during daytime, you know, solar generates a lot of power. Actually, the the price is much higher than average. So, so that type of thing, you know, I, I'm not expert in this distribution you know, uh, uh, area, but uh, I believe it's, it's decentralized in the power uh, distribution will become more and more prevail in the future. Yeah. I'm uh, Dennis McGinn with ACOR. Uh, question for either guest. One of the uh, disadvantages, of course, to solar uh, is that when the sun goes down, you're not getting any, uh, any electricity. Uh, this whole idea of uh, energy storage holds a lot of promise if we can figure out a way to uh, carry over the beneficial effects of uh, solar and wind. Any thoughts or, on uh, how to do that or is there any good work being done in energy storage that you can see would uh, scale up to either a distributed generation or even a grid-wise type of uh, approach? Yeah, I, we. I mean, I think you're right. I mean, Dr. Schur is exactly right. It, it, you get the cost of solar to start coming down. That's going to revolutionize distributed generation. And I think you'll see the lower the costs become, the more you see distributed generation. Um, it's got to be some type of energy storage. And you're starting to see some, I think, a fair amount of investment going into the energy storage area, into batteries, looking at different ways that you might uh, find ways to store the energy. I mean, there's, there's pumped hydro and things. But really, it looks like battery technology if you look at a packaged unit, 
it's going to have to be some combination of solar and battery. And, and that combination uh, will, will give you something that's, we think, going to be quite attractive. But then you, you, you're going to have to address the cost of that. But it, I think you're seeing battery technology, solar technology coming down. As they come down, that's going to make it much more viable. Actually, you know, related to that, uh, I had a conversation with, with one of, also one of the big, uh, uh, you know, power company in, in China. So this guy, he started investing in polysilicon manufacturing. Hmm. So he actually put some putting money hmm. to, to, to start a manufacturing polysilicon. Hmm. And I asked him why? Because you are in a coal fired uh, power company. Why you start yes. investing in solar? He said, uh, he also like, uh, like what Paul said, he believes solar is the future. Hmm. Especially he thinks solar even has advantages over wind, hmm. wind you know, technology in particular. Hmm. Because solar is so predictable. Yes. So every day from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock, I can predict right. how much power I can expect uh, you know, being generated from yes. solar. Yes. So they can wire down right. you know, maybe generation from yes. coal power, uh, coal fired you know, uh, generation. So, so I think uh, you know, the problem is I agree with him because, mm. because it's like a match the peak you know, of the uh, uh, like power demands you know, during daytime. And the uh, second question related to the cloudy day. Even if it's cloudy day and the solar can still generate electricity, even you know, in this uh, you know, uh, light, still generate electricity. I mean, uh, uh, rule of thumb is even in a raining day, right? So in the generation of electricity by solar panel probably is about 15 to 20 percent mm. you know, of electricity being generated in a, in, a, in a sunshine day. So, yeah. How would you both compare, because you both operate in China, the incentives, this is a question from the audience, um, the in government incentives for alternatives in the United States and in China today. How would you compare? The comparative efforts of governments there to use fiscal or tax policy, you know, uh, subsidies or, or regulations to stimulate alternative investments. Okay, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit about, uh, I, I would say at this moment, uh, U.S. subsidy, you know, to alternative energy is definitely is uh, more definite mm -hmm. and uh, clear uh, than what we have in China. Really? So, but in China is like uh, I would say the, the policy is still very vague. You know, I mean, he he just you know won a, a wing project. <laughs> so actually, it's a bidding system, right? Mm. Tendering system. So, so I'm not sure. Do you think uh, you know the prize you're tendering, you can still make profit? So because <laughs> for some other project, like uh, we, we, we understand this yeah. tendering process is, is, you know, basically what, how it works is who offers the lowest feeding price right. that who will win the project. So I think for biomass, they're talking about maybe uh, 25 RMB, maybe three year cent mm. uh, kilowatt hour type of subsidy for biomass. Mm. So but for solar, virtually there's no you know, definite incentive policy yet. Is there a question or ask, is there a local content required for solar panels sold in China? Local? Local content. You have to make so much of it from local content. Um, not really. 